Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order 13 of 2020, appointing Samaya Hussein Mir as Secretary General for the King Hamad Global Centre for Peaceful Coexistence. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, paid a visit to the General Command of the Bahrain Defence Force, the BDF. Upon arrival, the King was welcomed by the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Chief of Staff Dia bin Saga Al Noemi, and a number of senior BDF officers. His Majesty the King was accompanied by the Royal Court Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and Royal Guard Special Force Commander, Lieutenant Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Majesty was informed about the tremendous health efforts exerted by the BDF to confront the coronavirus COVID-19 as part of the nationwide campaign to combat the virus that is targeting the entire world. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the BDF for its noble contributions and readiness of its medical services to provide medical facilities that are equipped with the latest health supplies for examination, treatment and preventative measures through qualified and specialised medical personnel to prevent the spread of the virus. His Majesty the King affirmed that the health situation in the Kingdom is reassuring, noting that many cases, including citizens and residents, have already been discharged and gone back home safely after completing the quarantine period and receiving the necessary health care. His Majesty expressed thanks to the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and his personnel as well as medical and administrative teams for their efforts that are appreciated by all. His Majesty the King stated that the outstanding measures adopted by Bahrain to confront COVID-19 have been successful as a result of the distinguished cooperation of all Bahrainis who have always shown their true mettle under all circumstances for their high awareness and solidarity. His Majesty the King valued highly the BDF's noble humanitarian contributions as well as its keenness to assume its patriotic duty of defending the nation and protecting its progress march. Wishing everyone further success and Bahrain more progress and prosperity. Medical care and a healthy life is one of the most important aspects for a country's success and the Kingdom of Bahrain has always sought to establish a comprehensive and advanced health system based on experiences and expertise. And now Bahrain comes as one of the top countries in the field of health and was able to combat several viruses and diseases facing the world. Today Bahrain combats the coronavirus COVID-19 and eliminates its spread by taking precautionary and preventive measures done by experts and high national capabilities who provide advanced medical services and technology. The high status of the health system of the Kingdom of Bahrain is a result of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who exerts utmost efforts to ensure the safety of the people of Bahrain. Thanks to the support and efforts of His Majesty the King, Bahrain now has professional national cadres and a strong social cohesion. Bahrain was able to overcome many challenges in the past thanks to the directives of His Majesty the King, and with the role and efforts of its people, it will overcome this challenge as well. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef. The Council of Representatives held its weekly session, chaired by its speaker, Fasiya bin Abdullah Zainal, where it approved amending certain provisions of the Civil and Commercial Procedures Law and referred it to the Shura Council. They also approved a draft law ratifying the Air Services Agreement between Bahrain and Spain and referred it to the Shura Council. It approved and referred to the government proposals on assigning part-time contract employees with full-time contracts in ministries and government authorities within a year, obligating new homeowners to install fire extinguishers, smoke and gas detectors, and establishing rehabilitation centres and institutes and shelters for the necessary cases in all governorates of the Kingdom. The President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the SCIA, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, chairs the Council's weekly meeting, in which it prays the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to confront coronavirus COVID-19 by paying the expenses of all Bahrainis who remain abroad as part of His Majesty's keen interest in the health and safety of the citizens and residents. The SCIA also prays the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which are being carried out in the spirit of unity and collective responsibility.
The Council called on citizens and residents to cooperate with the relevant parties and warned against exploiting these circumstances for personal gain. The Council expressed its full support for the cautionary measures that Saudi Arabia is taking to keep the virus from spreading among the visitors of the two holy mosques. After that, the Council approved a list of plans for the years 2021 to 2022 and reviewed the forecasted budget to carry them out. The SEIA Secretary-General then presented the finances of its plans to build new mosques. The Ministry of Health announced that the first group of Bahrainis repatriated from Iran has arrived back to Bahrain. The Kingdom has established an evacuation plan to repatriate citizens in a chartered aircraft in order to safeguard the well-being of the incoming arrivals as well as citizens and residents in the Kingdom. Upon arrival, passengers were tested and will either be quarantined or transferred to a dedicated isolation centre for treatment in accordance with the results and standards set by the World Health Organisation. The Ministry is coordinating with other authorities on repatriating the remaining Bahrainis in Iran while ensuring that proper isolation and community protection measures are being taken. The Ministry of Health announced that 47 individuals have been discharged after completing the mandatory 14-day quarantine period, bringing the total number of individuals discharged from quarantine to 115. The Ministry emphasised that the individuals, 15 male and 30 female Bahraini nationals and two Indonesian females tested negative for the coronavirus, COVID-19, before being discharged. The Ministry noted that all quarantined individuals are being monitored and cared for by a specialised medical team in line with the guidelines established by the World Health Organisation to guarantee the containment of the virus and to preserve the health and safety of the community. The Ministry further reiterated the importance of all individuals returning from Italy, South Korea, Egypt or Lebanon during the past two weeks to self-isolate for 14 days, limit their contact with others and schedule the mandatory medical examinations by visiting www.moh.gov.bh forward slash 444 or calling 444. Five new cases of coronavirus were detected in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, bringing the total number of infected cases to 20. The country's Ministry of Health stated that four citizens were diagnosed with the disease, three of whom had arrived from Iran and Iraq and entered the quarantine after their return. The fourth case was a citizen with mild respiratory symptoms and the fifth case was an Egyptian man who arrived from Egypt to the Kingdom and was quarantined in a hospital in the city of Mecca. Four new corona cases have been confirmed in Kuwait in the past 24 hours, bringing the total to 69, according to the Health Ministry spokesman today. One of the four new cases is associated with recent travel to Iran, while another case confirmed an Egyptian national had come into contact with another coronavirus patient associated with travel to Azerbaijan, according to the Health Ministry. The remaining two confirmed cases are Kuwaiti males who recently arrived from Egypt. The United Arab Emirates has confirmed 15 new coronavirus cases today, bringing the total to 74, according to the Health Ministry. The new cases are of different nationalities and have been in quarantine due to precautionary measures taken. Some were infected upon contact with other confirmed cases, and others had recently returned from travel abroad. A total of 12 people have recovered in the UAE as of today. Lebanon recorded its first death from coronavirus today, a patient that had been quarantined since returning from Egypt. The government has halted flights for non-residents from epicentres of the virus, shut schools and warned against public gatherings as the total number of cases rose to 41 this week. Lebanon's tripling, crippling financial crisis could pose a grave threat to managing a coronavirus outbreak that has so far been kept in check but is expected to spread. Tunisia announced that it has confirmed three more cases of coronavirus, bringing the total number in the country to five, of whom four had recently arrived from Italy. Meanwhile, the Tunisian authorities said they will suspend all flights and shipping to Italy except Rome. The country's health ministry also said it will bring forward a scheduled school holiday to Thursday from next Monday amid the spread of the novel coronavirus. A 100-year-old Chinese man recovered from coronavirus and was discharged from the hospital on Saturday, making him the oldest person to recover from the virus. The man underwent treatment for 13 days before he was released with another 80 coronavirus patients from a hospital in Wuhan. He was admitted with underlying health problems such as Alzheimer's disease, hypertension and heart failure. 
Medical professionals from the military reportedly used a variety of treatment methods, including antiviral treatment through traditional Chinese medicine and convalescent plasma therapy. Residents in the Italian capital formed long queues at supermarkets to stockpile food after Premier Giuseppe Conte put the entire country on lockdown to combat the coronavirus. At a Carrefour market in central North Rome, entry and exit was being regulated by staff as customers lined up outside with shopping trolleys. The government has effected a ban on all but the most important travel in the country. The only travel allowed will be for proven work reasons, for health conditions or other cases of necessity. St Peter's Square was also sealed off and deserted. Pope Francis had already stopped public appearances and masses and started live streaming his private daily mass from his residence. <music> Yemen's National Army said it arrested control of several northern towns from the Iran-backed Houthi rebels, a step towards reversing the coup militia's rapid gains in the strategic area. Yemeni forces supported by the Saudi airport announced that they retook cities in the vast Kubaldaf district that borders Saudi Arabia. The battles over the last two days killed at least 35 fighters from both sides and wounded dozens of others. The Houthis have brought these sites under their control just days earlier as part of advances made following the capture of Hazem and capital of oil-rich Jaff province. The head of the UN's atomic watchdog urged Iran to cooperate immediately and fully with a landmark nuclear agreement with world powers that is hanging by a thread. Rafael Grossi, the new chief of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, said the IAEA had raised questions related to possible undeclared nuclear material and nuclear-related activities at three locations that have not been declared by Iran. The agency called on Iran to provide access to the locations and said Tehran had failed to engage in substantive discussions to clarify the agency's questions. Two U.S. service members were killed in north-central Iraq while accompanying Iraqi security forces on a mission targeting Daesh terrorists. U.S. Central Command said in a statement that the two U.S. military members were not being publicly identified until their families could be notified. American military commanders have decided to review how their forces conduct missions in Iraq and Syria after the deaths. According to one military official, the Americans who were killed had to be pulled out of with a hoist after falling into a crevice. A 10-year-old boy and his mother were rescued 52 hours after being trapped under a collapsed building in the southern city of Quazhou. Video ha handout released by the Fire and Rescue Department showed rescuers pulling out the boy and his mother from the debris of a hotel which collapsed on Saturday. The hotel was used as a medical observation spot for people travelling from the regions hit by the new virus epidemic. Authorities said the rescuers found a mother and her child in the rubble yesterday and after three hours of efforts, both were successfully rescued. The death toll from the collapse has risen from 11 and 50 people have been pulled out of the debris. Programmers say they've created an artificial intelligence captain that will enable an unmanned ship to cross the Atlantic Ocean later this year. Navigating the busy waters off the coast of southwest England isn't too challenging for this experienced seafarer. Now programmers say they've created AI Captain that will enable an autonomous ship to safely self-navigate across the Atlantic Ocean later this year. The Mayflower Autonomous Ship will follow the footsteps of the pilgrims who completed the historic journey from England to the New World almost 400 years ago. If successful, the vessel would herald a new era for automatic research ships. It would also be the first self-navigating full-sized vessel to cross the Atlantic 